Hello everyone, we're going to go through some of the features of the new school vacuum system here at the high school in Salisbury. Okay, so that you know how it works. Okay, first of all, we have a master power switch. If that is in the off position, no electricity at all runs to any component of the vacuum system. However, once you have turned that off, beware that there may be some residual electricity in some capacitor or something within this system. So don't assume that the electricity from every component is automatically gone. It may take some time for that to wind it down, okay? Up here we see that the power is on and the hopper is clean with these lights, these lights lit up. The, um, this system has a built-in sensor that measures the amount of sawdust and shavings inside the disposal area. And if the sawdust is too high, you can't even run this system because that sawdust could in effect uh, damage the system, cause it to back up and get jammed even worse, okay? Here we have a system on off switch. This switch is a secondary power switch. If I turn that off, it shuts it off to all the components beyond the main switch and to the sensors and the circuit boards that are inside here, okay? So if I turn that system on to power it up, it actually goes through an analysis program where it checks all the safety features to make sure that those things are set, that they're working, that the sensors are working, okay? So this, this system will check itself, okay? We have an abort gate here for the summer and winter just to avoid bringing in cold air in the winter, okay? A manual shake button allows you after the system is shut down to shake the inside of the vacuum system. And we will actually go out and see that and show you what actually does shake out there in a few minutes, okay? If I push that now, okay, the manual shake is on, the shaker is running, which means that on the unit outside, the fabric socks that fill with sawdust are running. I don't know if, I, if that is timed. If I turn it off, it, it is timed. So it's going to run for 30 seconds or two minutes, some preset value. Okay, this light right here is shows that your hopper high level has actually been activated and that you have too much sawdust in there. So this will tell you that it's clean. This will tell you if it is full, okay? We have a spark protector activated, okay? This system is built to prevent sparks from getting into the system and traveling all the way to the vacuum unit on the outside, it could possibly do two things. A spark in the system could set off an explosion if you had enough dust, or the spark could become lodged in the, um, in, in the vacuum unit or in the sawdust barrels and cause a fire there. Okay, so we'll look at that more. Okay, how does that work? Well, there are spark detectors in these pipes it's actually way, way, I'll, I'll show you when we get over there, way over on the other side of the shop, an infrared spark detector, and it sees a spark as it travels through the ductwork. It's just an electric eye that measures the, uh, that looks for something that is super hot, okay? So that is the spark protector. Here's the explosion vent fault. If there were ever an explosion inside our vacuum system, then there's a special gate outside that would actually shut to make sure that the explosion would not come back inside the school. Why do vacuum systems explode? Because wood, if it's pulverized into a fine, fine sawdust and dispersed in the air actually becomes explosive. Very, very dangerous. The, the system that we have here has been, was, was installed because of an explosion in a mill in British Columbia a few years where there was so much dust in the system, something ignited the dust and the fireball came back through this mill and killed uh, several people. In truth, we could never produce enough sawdust in this school shop to have an explosion. However, the system has to be built, you know, safe enough to handle an explosion. We could get enough sawdust in our system if we suddenly dumped a massive amount of fine sawdust into the air. 
Okay, if you don't think that sawdust is explosive, take a handful of fine, fine sawdust, and if you throw it over a campfire, you'll actually see a, 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 a mini explosion, a little puff. Uh, don't try that. That might get me into trouble. Okay, but you actually can have a, a sawdust explosion. Okay, broken bag detector tells when one of the bags inside the outside unit is broken. Here's a backdraft damper fault, which means that the damper, which keeps air from coming back into the school is not working. And a motor fault says that one of the sensors in the electric motor or electric motors outside has failed. And there are a number of electric motors. Okay, the master emergency switch cuts all the power off to all the units. And our system start is here. Um, students can push this button if they're invited to. With certain machines, we need to run the vacuum system every time that we are using certain machines. Okay, so I'm just going to push this and you'll notice that the system is not immediate like the old vacuum system was. This system here actually takes about 30 seconds to get fully velocitized, to get all its speed up there, to get the maximum suction. I think we're about 15 seconds in now and it's about halfway. It goes and it's taking off. And only now is it running at full speed. Okay, now, once I hit the stop button, the wind down time for this new vacuum system is actually very, very quick, but we can actually see on this control panel what starts to happen. The vacuum system winds down to a stop so that there's no more air going through it. And then within a few seconds, the shaker outside will actually begin and it will start to shake all the socks to clean all the dust and sawdust and dirt out of them. Okay, that's all cycled into, I think it's actually a 30 second shake. And I, we're not gonna stay here and watch that come on. We're just gonna go through the shop and look at several of the components. Okay. With our old vacuum system, we had 16 drops. With this system, I think we have eight drops. A big reduction, but we did not need many of the old drops, okay? First machine that is attached to the vacuum system is the belt sander. Okay, sanders produce plenty of fine dust that can explode and plenty of fine dust that can get into your lungs and into your respiratory system and irritate your eyes. Therefore, this is a very, very good thing to have connected to the vacuum system. Okay, all these little control gates are actually fixed in place because this system needs to be balanced. When they first set it up, they have to tune it the very same way you would have to tune the alignment in a vehicle or tune a musical instrument so that the amount of suction leaving every machine is balanced with the amount of duct work, the pipe work, and with the air that returns into the school shop. Okay, so everything has to be balanced. That's why in the old days, we used to be able to turn some machines off, turn others on and control the, the air pressure coming to different machines but this is in, has been balanced by professionals using gauges that measure the air pressure, okay? Uh, I have mentioned these, these green grounding lines here. The, in all the ductwork in this shop, even though it is steel, galvanized steel, and it will conduct electricity, the grounding of it is backed up by all these green cables that are bolted in, and what they do is they take all the static electricity out of all the pipes so that there is not an explosion in the system. Remember, the how would a spark get into the system? Well, if a tool was hot, a machine was hot, and a piece of hot sawdust or hot metal got into the system, uh, a spark could get into the system. But just all those millions and billions of sawdust particles moving through the pipes actually goes and creates a static charge. It's the same thing as rubbing your feet across carpet and then reaching out and touching someone's nose and giving them a shock. All those particles rubbing in the through the air and, and against the side of these pipes create static charges. These 
copper lines go and reduce the electric charge in the system. They are all grounding and that keeps that helps to prevent any shock in the system. Sometimes vacuum systems will actually have a, an exposed wire with no insulation running through the interior of the pipes just to get rid of the electric charge. That may seem boring, but that's actually a, a safety feature, okay? Even plastic piped vacuum systems need to have copper wire in it or steel wire in it to reduce the charge. So if you actually build your own vacuum system in your own workshop and you use all plastic piping, make sure there is an exposed wire running through the pipes to reduce the static buildup. Okay, remember the static charge will just build up, build up, build up, build up, and then it will flash like lightning. Okay, so the belt sander has been attached. So we move across the the shop. We do have one outlet or one inlet that we can move to different machines and that is what we attach to the router table. Okay, what the manufacturer installed to our router table was not up, to, it was not good workmanship. It was uh, poor quality. So we had to take it off and just hook the hose on, the flexible five inch hose on to the router table itself but here we can actually move it from here over to this spindle sander or even over to the wood lathe. Okay, all devices create a lot of a lot of sawdust and chips and those things need to be removed. Okay, particularly with the router table because the wood chips coming off the cutters can actually go and damage the piece that you are working on. So you want to have those evacuated as soon as you can. Okay, we travel across the shop and we've got so many projects in here now, it's messy. Our two saw stop saws both have permanently fixed vacuum lines. The saw stops require a continual removal of the sawdust without the vacuum system, okay? These saw stops could actually be set off. And in one of the other New Brunswick high schools, they set up their new saw stop saw they didn't have a vacuum line running from it. And within a few days, it had actually gone and set off the saw stop. And then that ruins your blade and ruins the cartridge. And you end up with something that looks like this. Okay, so the saw stops have to have it. Okay, our belt sander okay, is also permanently attached to the vacuum system good creates a lot of dust protects the finish the thickness planer actually has the largest demand this will create the most waste of any tool in the shop and you have to have a vacuum line on it otherwise in just a few minutes you would have a pile of shavings in the shop several feet high okay over here we have the jointer and the jointer also has a vacuum system. Remember, everything is grounded, attached to it. Absolutely necessary. You might use the jointer for a couple minutes before it became clogged. And on the far side of the shop, we have a hood over our chop saw. Okay. And this actually works as a funnel. It's not the greatest invention ever, but it actually does work. It does keep the air very, very clean while you are cutting at it. Okay, and remember one of the policies in the shop is if we're cutting pressure-treated lumber, we try to have the vacuum system on because pressure-treated lumber has all sorts of other little chemicals in it that we just want to dump out into the, the barrels if we can. Okay, so that is inside. You can actually see the ductwork traveling up there. Okay. We'll go across here and look at a couple features. Okay, that you can actually see in this ductwork. Okay, I'm actually going to head up into the hardwood storage area. Excuse me, while I walk up the steps. Two, three, five, six, seven. Okay, here we go. That little black box on the side of the ductwork is an infrared sensor and it looks for hot pieces, burning pieces of wood or metal fire within the ductwork. If it were to see it, 
it would immediately send an alarm to the control panel, but it would create, it would cause some things to happen outside to prevent an explosion, okay? So that is a spark detector, okay? This pipe right here represents the sawdust and waste leaving the school and it goes out through the wall here and down below we have the return air that comes in and dumps the filtered air inside the school okay so this large grilled feature is where the return air comes back into the school okay on a cold winter's day you'll actually feel the temperature difference but as the vacuum system gets warmed up, the air as it comes in does start to get warmer, okay? Now, there are still some more features in the school. For example, we have this new valve here. Please don't ever touch this. Make an awful, awful mess. This is where a, an emergency water line runs out to the outdoor components, okay? And the idea is if there's ever a fire inside the vacuum system in the schoolyard, okay, it, this system will actually flood it with water, okay? Now, if you turn these valves, it's not going to hurt it anyways because this is all capped off and protected, but still, don't please don't be touching those, okay? This is considered a dry system in that the pipes are actually not full of water, but if they need to be, this system over here would actually inject high pressure water into the system, okay? So right now, this galvanized pipe running up and down, which actually goes out to the outdoor unit, is filled with air. And this is the valve system that if it senses a fire, switches that from air to being filled with water, okay? And that's why this whole unit has its own compressor and everything here is self-contained, okay? The black line is filled with water. There's a control valve here that keeps the outdoors filled with air. Why would you want the outdoor pipes filled with air? You do not want them freezing solid in January and breaking, so external pipes are dry pipes and they get flooded with water if need be. Okay, lots of controls here. We don't touch these. Please don't ever touch them. If you touch them, it actually shut down the system automatically. And if the system shut down, that would actually close the school shop. Okay, so that's what this entire unit is here. This is the transfer from a wet system to a dry system. And of course, it's all hooked in with the alarm system. Okay, now time to go outdoors. I've already opened the fence. This is actually kept locked for a reason. You can actually see it on the sign says explosion relief zone do not occupy if you were to have a sawdust explosion it would explode like a bomb it wouldn't just be a little puff it would be actually explode with a fireball and extreme force okay up here we can see the the sawdust pipe as it leaves the school and the first thing that it comes to is that red box up there which is an emergency fire gate if it senses an explosion in the system or a fire in the system there's an emergency gate in there that snaps shut in less than a second and keeps that explosion or that fire from going back into the school okay so the sawdust leaves the school it's gone past the infrared light the spark detector it travels through this gate box Okay, and then the sawdust, we'll just call it sawdust because it could be shavings or dust or anything else, okay, travels into this, into the vacuum unit. Now, what would, what is behind this gray steel wall? Well, there's actually a deflector. Most of the sawdust gets dropped down into one of the two barrels that are down below. Okay. Meanwhile, the air is still pulling everything through. The stuff that doesn't automatically get pulled down into these, dropped into those barrels, okay? Actually, let's go up the ladder. I don't fall off the ladder. 
climbing up the ladder, holding a camera. One hand. Come here, I've already opened these gates. The, the These are the socks. Okay, so the air coming from the school gets sucked up into these socks. Most of the sawdust or shavings drops down below, but the rest gets pulled up into here. This is actually a vacuum chamber that we are, we are in here. And um, I don't know, I think there are 64 of these socks in here. The air gets pulled out through them. This acts as a filter and the air goes back to the school. Well, when I talked about the shaker, this is what gets shaken. If the shaker were going, these socks would actually be moving back and forth, cleaning out any sawdust or dust that's in them. But over the years, these things can actually get filled with pitch and oils from wood and super fine dust. And every few years, they actually do need to be cleaned. The old vacuum system that we had actually had over a hundred socks Cleaning them was a two-day job, and it was just a, just an absolute nightmare. These these socks are a lot bigger, and they're actually a lot a lot better to clean. Okay, so let's just close this up and lock this up. Okay, there's actually not not much out here that could be harmed by anyone because the system is, has its own self protection. Okay, let's look back again at that flap box. That drops has a big has a big steel flap in there that closes if there is an explosion in the school. Okay, so anyways, the air gets pulled up through those socks, and uh, if we can see where the air coming out of the top of the socks comes back through this pipe. Okay, we actually have another sensor down in here. Travels across, and this is looking that's another fire sensor. Okay, and travels through there to the motor, the fan, sorry, and the motor system. And then the air, after it goes through that large circular fan down there, it's all been cleaned, goes back into the school. And here we have another blast defect, uh, deflector. So if there's an explosion or fire in the system, there's actually another valve in there that flips down and dumps the air back into the schoolyard. Okay, we remember we said that this is a blast zone out here. Okay, we're gonna go back and look at the motor in a couple of minutes, but we'll, we'll talk more about the blast protection. Okay, down the ladder we go. Okay, another, another external master switch. Okay, these are blast doors. We're always talking about explosion in the system. If there is an explosion in the system, these doors are actually uh, made of a strained sheet metal and they will actually blow, there'll be holes blown right into, through these, these pieces of sheet metal, okay? This is where the, the, the pressure from the blast would get diffused. And the, the force of the blast would actually whoosh, stretch right out into this area. That's why this area that has no concrete is fenced off. Okay, this is all considered to be the danger zone. And if this was a parking lot, you would not be allowed to park any cars in here. Okay, one of the high schools, they put in a new vacuum system, and then the blast doors were pointed out towards the driveway, and they actually had to put deflectors in to make sure that if there was an explosion, it didn't flip over a car or blow the windows out of a school bus or something like that. Okay, so these are all, there's a lot of planning and engineering that goes into these systems. Okay, there are sensors out here that tell if there actually has been an explosion so that you can't go and restart them. Okay, these barrels, two barrels is not very much. We used to have six barrels. Um, and these ones are actually very, very rigid, even though they're on wheels and they're outside and you don't have to crawl into this terrible terrible dark uh, steel box to clean them out. These ones, I don't really think they're the greatest things to have to clean out. I just checked them and there's not very much sawdust in them. Okay, so let's go over again to look at where the, the, school, the air is after it has been cleaned. Comes down this pipe, goes across here. Here's a clean out door in case every now and then you might just want to 
check to see that there's nothing in there that's wrong. Okay, we have an anti-vibration sleeve right here so that the vibrations from the fan don't cause all the other pipework to shake and vibrate and break down. Here's another anti-vibration sleeve. You'll see a few of those in the system. Okay, and here we have the large fan. If I come across here and look at it, you can see that it's the fan is driven by this 40 horsepower three phase electric motor especially designed to be out in the weather okay has a belt system and that drives that fan and can move a lot of cubic feet of air every minute okay it's not as big as the system we used to have but it does it does everything that we need to do in this school okay another tower so that you can reset that damper gate okay if you want to you can have it so that no air gets recycled into the school okay why would you want to do that you might want to do that if if you thought the uh, air coming back in you know smelled bad or like chemicals or paint you don't want paint fumes in your vacuum system system but you might get them sometimes anyways okay so if you want to you actually can change the air system so it is always bringing fresh air from inside the school okay that is a vacuum tour very fast hope that you're able to understand it okay oh here's here's that dry pipe that comes out of the, the school. Remember, if there's a fire in this unit, this will flood with water, okay? Just so that it doesn't burn up. So, you know, there could be a fair amount of sawdust in there at times. And fabric, the, all those socks, they would also burn. Beyond that, there's not much. Everything else is just steel. But this this is where the dry pipe comes out. If there's a sensor in here that, that says there's a fire, it will actually flood the entire system with water. And that would be a very, very big thing. That would be cause a lot of problems. I don't know how long it would take to get the system inspected and, and reestablished and dried out and everything else. Okay, thank you very much for joining this tour of the vacuum system.